We met with a lot of uh, partners in the United States of America. We met with the Congress and congressmen, the Senate. We also met some key people in the State Department in terms of the re-engagement process. We are clear that we need $15 billion if we are to restore our country. That $15 billion is not going to be something that we will start to work on when we become a government. We learned during the inclusive government that it takes time to re-engage. I'm sure if you ask him, Mr. Mandela, thank, you know, you are still a terrorist, even up to a time when he departed, because it's very difficult to reverse measures that are imposed on a country. So we need to make sure that we begin and commence this process. And we are serious, we are looking into the future. Our colleagues in Zanfi have still steeped in the past. They think that they are perpetual in government. We know that they are temporary in government, and they are on their way out. That is what informed that trip, and we make no apologies. Zino Kamanaka, Kari Kuchema, good Biden, Abu Yakuzo, developer Zimbabwe. Oh, neither do we. Kanana Muswapa, no Gramubikre, Puri, Jaja, Manam Dik, Ago Kurabo. One of the things that we have seen is the restructuring of parliament. And we, Zimbabwe came out of the August 23-24 general elections. ZANU-PF had less than two-thirds majority and Triple C was in there as a political party of not. Now this has changed. ZANU-PF now holds a two-thirds majority and is cruising in parliament. Now many people would want to know. Will Parliament serve the interests of the people? Will Parliament be able to stand in the gap as a representative of the people and challenge the executive and deliver results? One of the parliamentarians who was elected during these by-elections joins me in the studio to discuss the Parliament, Zimbabwe's economy, the people, and the way forward. Now, this is the free talk. With me, your host as usual, Dara B. And I am going to be doing a little bit of some business with Sheki Timburwa in this episode. Join me after this break. Welcome back to this the free talk in proud partnership with the Frederick Newman Foundation here on HSTV and I your host as usual Dara B. Now joining me to have a discussion on the general political atmosphere in this country and policy direction is one African an honorable of member of parliament for Chegutu. Thank you. Welcome and thank you very much Sheki for joining me. Thank you so much uh, Dara B. Amazing. Now, one and only. Thank you so much for inviting me. Amazing. Now, Sheki, you are, uh, say, a prisoner of fortune. You got into parliament through the misfortune of recalls of other members of the Triple C. Mm. Do you feel indebted to the Triple C? Uh, thank you so much for, for, for the question. What I would say is um, it's so unfortunate. Why I would say it's so unfortunate is um, because I've also gone through the process of election. I now understand the consequences, the burdens that a candidate carries when he's getting into politics. It starts from funding, emotional stress, all those things that you can talk about. The pressure that comes with an election and then you just wake up one day, there's someone who has recalled you. I feel for them and I really empathize with them because some of them, as far as I know, some of them, they actually use their own personal money. And I don't think some of them had already recouped some of the financial burdens that they didn't get during the 23 August election. But uh, it's an unfortunate thing that I don't have any control over. And uh, despite whatever that happened, uh, I'm happy in the sense that at least after the recalls, we've managed to have an election. And after the election was done, the parliament is back and we are back in business. That's what I would say. Uh, I mean, you, you talk about um, uh, you know, members of parliament uh, investing money and emotion mm -hmm. and, 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 and being recalled, that's the, the major loss to them. Mm -hmm. you, you sound like getting into office as a parliamentarian is a way in which 
you have to recoup what you used or lost during the campaign period. Is this the reason why members of parliament walk into parliament? Uh, I would answer for myself, but basically you see when a person becomes a member of parliament, there are different reasons why they choose to be a candidate or to represent the people in the legislative house. But uh, obviously, anything that you do, whether it's career-wise or whether it's a profession, whatever that you do is an investment. So recouping doesn't necessarily mean getting your money back. Recouping means even fulfilling and satisfaction of doing that which you intended to do. Like in this case, we are discussing about members of parliament. I think when one becomes a member of parliament, they are doing that so that they can represent the people. That's my concept of becoming a member of parliament. So I think they had not recouped that because they had not yet served as they were supposed to do, because they were duly elected in the August 23. But unfortunately, chaos happened, and then they were recalled. That's what I'm saying. I sympathize with them, because I know some of them, they would have gone all an extra mile for them to be where they are. They went through the entire process. And why I'm saying this so is because I now know the processes. The campaign teams, you've got the campaign team. It's a whole machine that you're pushing so that you can be able to be elected as a member of parliament, representing the people of that particular constituency. So let's talk about representing people. Mm. In, in your view, because people elected someone to represent them in Chagutu West. True. And, and that person is not going to represent them. You are now representing them. Mm -hmm. and, and, and do you feel okay with the fact that you are the second best choice? I wouldn't say second best choice. What I would say is um, it's uh, it's it's you know, when you go into an election, it's a privilege that is given to every Zimbabwean. Whether it's Dara who's going to be campaigning in the next election, it's a right that every Zimbabwean has. And uh, if you checked or if you've been following through, during the 23 August, I was none of the one, I was not part of the candidates that were there. Both for our party in ZANPF and also on the opposition, there was Ad Mochiwero, who happens to be a good brother of mine. We share a good personal relationship with him. Because we grew up in the same place, we did a lot of things together there from the perspective of being residents of Chegutu. So when the recall happened, uh, the first thing that I looked at was the people that are within the constituents. I've stayed with them, I've lived with them, I know some of their problems, and I believe they deserve a person who can also lead them. And because there was a nomination that happened, and there was a proclamation that was given by the president so that an election can be held. I was happy to see Admo, he was back on the ballot. And uh, we had Gift Konjan, who was also back on the ballot. So these are the people that were also candidates in the 23 August. And then I was the person who was coming in there representing ZANPF. But I was not on the August 23 election. So according to me, it was an election that was fully represented with all the candidates that were there in the previous election. The, the, my point is... Mm. People made the decision, mm -hmm. and without their consent, mm -hmm. people were forced back into an election. Mm -hmm. And but were people forced back into an election because of someone's consent? That was none of my controlling. It's something that happened some way, and then it happened that the people, according to the laws of the land, when something like that happened, like for example, when a recall happens, there's a vacancy that is declared, and then the candidate who was actually recalled came back in the same race. So he was there, he was representing himself as an independent. As an independent. And the reason why probably he came back as an independent, this is just me assuming, there is a reason why he came back as an independent because of where the chaos was coming from. Let us talk about policy and direction. Mm -hmm. What is your policy framework and direction for the people that elected you? Uh, the first thing that I need to do as a legislator is to make sure the environment is conducive to my people. The people that gave me their hope by casting votes towards me, they need the basic needs of having a better life. Be able to put food on the table, be able to take their kids to school, be able to go to hospitals that are fully flushed with medication. Those are my prerequisites that I'm supposed to push within the parliament, not only for my constituents, but for everyone who also voted for their own MP. So that's the purpose why I was elected. I'm there to make sure I make life better for the people that voted for me, despite their political affiliation. Let us look at your plan. How Definitely. do you wish to achieve that, to ensure that, that hospitals that have not had medicine mm -hmm. uh, for the past 20 years or so have medicine, that schools that have been going down 
as, as we speak, mm. they are still going down, uh, especially government schools, because mm. of underfunding. How do you hope that you, you can change that? <clears throat> Thank you so much for that question. You see, I don't work as an island, as, an, as a member of parliament. I work within a structure that has got a head of state, which is the president, and then there is an MP, and then there are councillors. So there is a national agenda that is there. You know it, NDS1, whereby it's a national development strategy that covers almost every facet of this country, whether it's infrastructure, whether it's education, whether it's health. I take cognizance that our country is going through the most. We have been tanking for a very long time. But I'm happy because of the new government that is there. They are doing everything within their capabilities to make sure we are back on track as a country. So you see, like, when it comes to every constituency, we are receiving what are called devolution funds that are going to be allocated for different perspective things or needs that are within How the much constituents. Is that? It depends. We are yet to know because the budgets are out and we'll be able to know. And I'm still a new legislator, so I'm here to get acquainted to the office. Let's talk about the NDS1 and stuff that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Now, the current state of the economy mm -hmm. of this country and what you're talking about in terms of delivery, do you think they, these two match? It would be so ambitious to say these two match at this particular point. But I believe what is critical and what is important is the pragmatic aspect of the implementation of the NDS-1. We can point at things that have been done so far by the Second Republic that we can say these are the pillars whereby we can premise a thriving economy. I'll give examples of things that have been done by the President, his government. Uh, for us or for any nation to be productive, they need to produce because pro production is the cure to poverty. I can give an example of another country like China. The reason why China is now the most dominant economy is because they are producing for everyone, including us, and America, or any economy that you can talk about. They managed to push their economy. 30 years ago, China was not where it is today. But they focused on infrastructure development, human capacitation so that they can be able to produce. And they were able to produce to the extent that they outproduce their needs as a country and then they started supplying other countries, including our country. So things that make a country produce, first of the things that is very critical is electricity or power. You can never be a productive country if you don't have electricity. And Zimbabwe, you know, and myself, we know Zimbabwe has been suffering from energy poverty. But right now, in as much as it's not yet sufficient, but you can see even the power producing company, they are now at least having a constant supply of about 1,500 megawatts. That is, it's not sufficient, but at least there is a change in that regard. And you look at the Wange substation 7 that was developed. It's not yet fully functional, but at least it's now coming into the national grid so that they can be able to give us electricity that we require in mining, in agriculture, and in production or in, in manufacturing. So I believe that's a critical thing, though we might not see the immediate change within the economy, but at least that's an indication that we are heading somewhere that is right. Then we come to the point of uh, probably agriculture. There's been implementations of from Vodza in Kwasa, we can talk about the dams that are being constructed by the government to make sure we've got sufficient water bodies to harvest so that we can do irrigation. So those things, even the Minister of, a a of Agriculture, he came out and he declared the amount of wheat we managed to harvest in the last season and the amount of maize we were able to, uh, to harvest in the last season. And you can see, because of the heat wave, plants are, we are, are withering within the fields, which means there might be an imminent drought. But now, if that is to happen again, we now have water harvesting bodies that are being constructed that can make sure Zimbabwe, after this, if this is to hit, we have sufficient means to be able to, 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 to supply for food security. But I believe the procedure or the implementation that has been done can be able to cap such kind of calamities. Well, the, the measure mm. of success of an economy mm -hmm. cannot be only linked to the levels of production. True. Not that I agree that production is in, in improved in this country at mm. all. You also need to look at the social aspects. That's true. And the social aspects in this country are devastating. Yeah, it's, 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 it's sad. But you have to understand, we are coming that we are an economy that is coming from a tanking situation. Which tanking situation? You know, Zimbabwe has been on a pedal of dilapidation since we were in, sanctions were imposed on us. We are a nation that is living out of the normal bounds a country is supposed to live. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, ever since we got sanctioned as a country, we lost more than 80 lines of credit. 
Check it. that are very fundamental. Check it. Exactly. You, you, you tell me about sanctions. Mm -hmm. I will show you ministers' vehicles, mm -hmm. luxury vehicles. Mm -hmm. I will show you a state house whose gate is being built mm -hmm. or was being built at a cost of two million mm -hmm. United States dollars. Mm -hmm. I will show you luxury and plush houses that are being built by the political elites in this mm -hmm. country. Why are the sanctions selective? Why do they affect roads and clinics and not the pockets of the elites? Maybe my first answer would be, I'll start by probably talking about uh, the gate of the state house, like you mentioned. Um, the state house is a national house that is occupied by the person who will be reigning during that particular time. So this is a national property. I, as an individual, I expect that place to be a place that resonates and that exudes dignity. You and I can tell that since our independence, that place had never been renovated. And there is a certain level of dignity. You're not, you're not answering my question. Mm -hmm. If indeed we, the sanctions are affecting the hospital, mm -hmm. Because the hospital also exudes dignity of a nation. They're also even affecting development. Yes. The, but, that's but, why we are now renovating yes, but, the, but, the... But, but if they are, mm -hmm. why are they eating selectively? That is my question. Why are they selective? Why is the same sanction mm -hmm. that's affecting the hospital not affecting the status? Why is the same sanction that is affecting a teacher mm -hmm. in a government school mm -hmm. not affecting a government minister who, by the way, is received 400,000 United States dollars in a loan. Mm. House loan. A house loan. And, and, and three or four service cars that they get. Mm -hmm. why, why are the sanctions selective? That's may, my question. May, may, maybe what I would, I would try to bring you back. You are, you, are, you, are, you are making us to have a comparison of hospitals or the health fraternity vis-a-vis -vis probably the development i'll give an example of the one that you also mentioned the state house the question is how many state houses do we have in this country and let's look at the quantity and the quantum number of the hospitals that we have you are going to realize that the state houses are few as compared to the hospitals that are there so if the two million is to be injected in the medical or into the ministry of health little is going to be visible on what has been done but if two million is going to be given or it has been given to the office of the president and cabinet to renovate the state house obviously there's going to become news because this is a singular property if you put two million mm -hmm. in a maternity ward mm -hmm. at Parinyato or mm -hmm. group hospitals mm -hmm. or Harare hospital mm -hmm. you will save thousands of lives Definitely. if you just put two million Definitely. you will save no life if you put that at the gate to build a gate so leadership as you are saying so the question you is you sit, you so sit question, here with me uh -huh, Shaki, and uh -huh. say you are here to save mm -hmm, the people mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. yet you are more comfortable saving those in power mm -hmm. because it's a s symbol of national development but the people are dying in hospitals probably, because they don't prob have paracetamol probably, probably. because I, i'm saying this Mm -hmm. To say this, you told me that hospitals don't have medicines here, mm -hmm. and you know that. Yeah, so you agree. That. So mm -hmm. this is this is trite. This is a fact that has been settled. Mm -hmm. But would it not be better mm -hmm. to forego renovation because we are under sanctions and deal with people issues? You see, you see, the question that is there, Dara, is let's look at the amount or the budget allocation that was given to the Minister of Health. In as much as we are losing life, there is no one who ever celebrate the loss of life no matter who the person is. But coming to the reality of economic and national building, that's a fraternity that has been in the intensive care for a very long time, especially our health sector. And let's look at the priorities of the government. The priorities of the government will be indicated by the allocation that has been given on the budget of the nation. Let's look at the amount that was allocated to the Minister of Health. Yes, it has got its own problems, which we are acknowledging and which I am acknowledging. And me seeing Minister of Health receiving the chunk of the budget is an indication. You, she, she, you, you can tell me. No, you, you are the member of parliament. You sit in parliament. I don't. 
I, and you are the one I, who's I, I in the interview. I sit in parliament today, so I'm still getting acquainted to that effect. You, 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 you are a politician. You have, you're running for office, so mm. these things you should know. Because, because you see, because you see, I don't want us to end up saying the government does not have care for its people when the government has given us a blueprint of what they are willing to do and what they are doing right now for us to be able it's like we can talk about what happened in Mpilo. if you check in Mpilo, they have a new machine that can cure cancer and that can be able to diagnose cancer this is a development that we have never seen i remember one of the major one of the senior journalists in this country complaining about it all over the social media right but and we are seeing a rectification of that the government is coming in to chip in in that regard yes some people might say let's not celebrate that but when i look at that myself i look at the lives that are now going to have access to services in impilo hospital that's what matters to me there is at least change and there is at least development that's coming but in as much as we are talking about this my question to you has not been answered mm -hmm. why are sanctions selective no they're not selective they are not really selective. I'll give you why I'm saying they are not selective. They are countries that right now, Dara, you can never be able to send money simply because we are out of the SWIFT court system. For you to send money there, you need to be able to send money through other channels and other means, which is problematic to you and me as citizens before we even go to the national state, to the, to the, to the, at, at a national level. There are so many times when Zimbabwe wants to actually even buy medication. That money goes through red flags. It's red flag simply because it's coming from Zimbabwe. There are people who have got assimilations and that have got assumptions that this money wants to buy this and that. And that has been the life of Zimbabwe ever since the sanctions were placed. And no one is there to explain that. Right now, whatever that we are doing in Zimbabwe, it's coming at a cost of a leg and an arm simply because we are not surviving in a normal mode which a country is supposed to survive. For us to be able to buy our medication, we go through rounds for us to be able to buy medication. Because everyone is trying to say, there are so many companies that we used to deal with as a nation that we are no longer dealing with because they say, you are sanctioned. If you go in every ministry and you try to inquire their procurement, procurement departments, they'll give you the same thing. For them to be able to buy something that might be costing a dollar, they'll end up buying it a dollar fifty or two dollars simply because Zimbabwe is not surviving in a normal mode. Simply because of like simply because yeah, of but, but but we can buy land cruisers. We can buy with that, that. My 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 point is we can buy land cruisers. The problem that but when it comes to medicines, we have, to, we have complaints. Listen. We 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 can mm. we can we can buy things when when luxuries that matter to mm. those to the elites. We we have business people who can splash Mercedes Benz mm -hmm. to, to to individuals getting government contracts. <laughs> Right from government contracts, <laughs> they, they splash money like it's confetti, and then we talk about sanctions. I mean, I'm not saying there are no sanctions. I'm saying, does that make sense to you? But you see, you're talking about I, I wouldn't know who you're talking to about, but you're talking about an individual here whom you and I probably we might not be acquainted. How many contracts and no, ways companies are I'm not are talking about that. individuals exactly. I'm just, I'm just giving you a picture. Mm -hmm. If you go right now at parliament. Mm -hmm. Of Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. you think that there, there's an executives meeting mm -hmm. with the type of cars those elected to save the people of Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. who you are saying are in poverty because of sanctions. Mm -hmm. You'd you'd think that blue chip company executives are meeting. Mm -hmm. If you go right now, so are you saying are you saying a member of parliament representing people should look, you should should not be should not have an executive car. If it's their money, it's fine. But if it's taxpayers' money and the taxpayers are suffering, do you find that plausible? You, you, you see, that's what I'm saying to say. We have to look at this at different levels. You were bringing in the issue of someone buying, probably a person who is a private business person, buying and splashing Mercedes-Benz to people. And I was saying, we cannot be able to discuss that because we don't know how many enterprises that particular individual has in Zimbabwe and outside of Zimbabwe. Then we are now coming back to the issue of legislators having expensive cars that are being bought to them at the expense of the taxpayers' money. Listen, that part, what we need to understand is this. These people, they need mobility for them to be able to do that which they were elected to do. I'll give you a very good example of my own constituents in Chekut West. For me to be able to go to a place called John Binya, there is need of resources to be deployed in that regard. Let's look at another legislator who's been elected as a member of parliament. But Sheki, I, wow. I think you miss you miss my point mm -hmm. by miles. Mm -hmm. I, I I don't dispute the fact that you need resources. Mm -hmm. 
But I'm saying that the resources for you to go there are found, but the resources to cure, to put medicine in a hospital are not found. You know, what I, you know what I'll promise you? The reason why I became a legislator is to go and debate such kind of policies. Because sometimes you cannot debate these things out of parliament. You have to be part of them for you, be, for you to, to, to be able to debate. There, there, there's a, a whipping system in parliament mm -hmm. in, 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 that is used in parliament. Mm -hmm. what, what makes you think so sure that you can depart from the ZANU-PF ideology and mindset that and has probably been give made. me the ZANU-PF ideology and mindset. And maybe you will give me that, but I'm asking you because you said you are getting into parliament mm -hmm. to ensure that you deal with these things. Because you, know, you, you and know, me agree know, that these things have been. You happening. know, you know when we when we get into parliament, I don't get into parliament to represent only ZANU-PF. I get into parliament to represent ZANU-PF and the people that voted for me despite their political affiliation. The reason why that's a safe house for people to debate. Is it? It's a safe house. Killer mm -hmm. was recalled for speaking out what his people mm -hmm. in his constituents were saying. Mm -hmm. That our leaders, the president, needs to sit down and have talks with Nelson Jamisa. Mm -hmm. He was recalled for that. But are you different that that's the reason why he was recalled? Because that's what, there are things that people assume. And there are things that people assimilate and because of the echo chambers mm. that we now have, well, people end up believing what is being said by people in public. Well, well, well his province, when they wanted him recalled, they mentioned all those things. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so His I, province? Yes. But with the province is oh. part of the people that were in the executive meeting that made him to be recalled. So, are you, you are aware of your party constitution, right? Yes, I do. Uh, how do you get recalled? You get recalled. The moment a person becomes recalled, number one, you have gone against the ideology of the party. How, that's what how, makes how, a person. How, how does, how, how's the process? That's, that's my, my point. You see, we are a political party that has got a structure. It has got the principal, the secretary general, and then it goes higher like the decorum of the party. Hmm. They are things that we agree at a party level. The implementation of those things, we implement things according to the vision of the person we have chosen through the Congress process to say this is the person who's going to lead us. In this yeah, case. But, but Sheikh, you don't answer questions, do you? I'm answering questions. No, I said, what is the process of the recall? The moment a person is no longer representing the interest let of the people. Let me help you the process of a definitely. recall from, from your party. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't come from the top. It comes from where? It comes from the. the province or the constituency that you represent. But it's approved and, by the National yes, PC. Yes, but the, the National Committee does not create new allegations other than those that will have come. Exactly. Yes. So I'm telling you those that brought it from that level mm -hmm. who then asked the uh, Central Committee and Politburo to approve the, the, the recall, recall mm -hmm. of Killer Zivu mm -hmm. raised these things. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm saying. Yeah. The, the what gets a person recorded in ZANPF is when you've gone against the ideology of the party. Mm -hmm. And this is not being done. I'm but, happy but, I mentioned but, it's not but, being but done I, from I, the top. I, I, it's I, coming from the same yes. people that voted you into yes. power. But you said you speak for your people. Yes, definitely. Those, those were elected. So if you're speaking for his people, why would then the same people raise up a concern There's a to difference. Say, There's uh -huh. a difference. You said you speak for those who elected you regardless of political parties. Definitely. It? Yes. He was, he was those who called for his recall mm -hmm. when way from his political party mm -hmm. but maybe you are speaking for those from across the divide but you see we are discussing what people insinuate is actually what happened because i believe in a party that listens to the voice of the person who's on the grassroots if i'm going if people in Chekutu are going to complain that okay this mp we chose in the previous election is no longer representing our interests and then they raise that concern and then the national committee and the provincial committee accept those uh, those 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 allegations and they investigate and they validate them then it means i'm no longer serving the interests of the people that elected me let us let us uh, 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 let us talk about mm -hmm. um let's move on and uh, and and talk about you know the current economic crisis that the people of Zimbabwe are facing. Mm -hmm. uh, prices are, are skyrocketing. Okay. Jobs are being lost. Companies are closing down. Mm -hmm. let's, talk, let's talk about that. Um, you see, when, when we have an economy that is running, there are companies that exit and there are companies that come in. So, in as much as we might have our own crisis, like I acknowledged in the first place, 
I don't look at situations from a short-sighted point of view. I look at things from a long-term point of view. Uh, we are moving with a mantra that is called Zimbabwe is open for business. Personally, I look at what policies, what legislation, what measures have been put in place to make sure business is conducive for people to be able to do. And I can give you probably another sector that is very critical to Zimbabwe, which is the agricultural sector. In as much as we still have challenges of funding to most some farmers, but I was happy with the policy and the legislation that allowed farmers to seek financial support from different players and they were given the right of willing buyer willing seller whereby they were no longer solemnly selling to gmb but they have got a right to sell if they were not funded by the government they had the right to sell their produce to those that provide them with capital or with money to be able to do farming when i look at that policy it's a policy that a farmer appreciates because they have been allowed to be given capital that they can inject into productivity Hence, so probably with that's the reason why we were able to meet our targets and our national demand of maize and wheat. So I look at those policies in as much as we still have problems that I acknowledge fully, but I look at some of the possibilities that have been created by the same government to make sure we are back on track when it comes to resuscitating our economy. But that cannot happen overnight. Let's look at someone who wakes up every single day mm -hmm. to go and, and your mother is a teacher. She still is there. Yes. Most teachers, mm -hmm. except those teaching in rural areas, can't send their own children to schools that they actually teach. Mm -hmm. Does that sound normal to you? It's not normal. Remember I said Zimbabwe is operating at an abnormal environment. And abnormal environments, they require abnormal measures for it to become functional. I've always said this, and I remember in our last interview I even said this. What happened in Zimbabwe was we were, we were able to politically emancipate our country. We got independence. We had prime minister. We had ministers who were Zimbabweans, blacks like us. But we had never gone through the process of economically emancipating our country to the point that the people that were doing the production of food, which we used to boast to say Zimbabwe is the food basket of Africa, majority of the people that were producing are the farmers that went out of this country in 2000. Mm. All right? And then... The people that were doing production in our minds, these were people that were not us. And during the independence, when we got our independence, what was supposed to be done was some of our cadres were supposed to be working in these companies that were doing production, whether it's in the pharmaceutical industry, whether it's in the agricultural sector, whether it's in the mining sector, which means there's a point in time in Zimbabwe. We didn't do the right thing, whereby we empower our people to be able to produce that which we eat. In, in, in what you are saying, mm -hmm. and what the Minister of Finance says, mm -hmm. and what ZANU-PF says, mm -hmm. ZANU-PF says it's good mm -hmm. That's its ideology. Mm -hmm. right? The Minister of Finance says that they're ticking all the boxes. In fact, the people's lives are improving. Mm -hmm. But you sit here and represent ZANU-PF, mm -hmm. and you are saying something totally different. It's not different. Lives are changing. What's but different? For the worst? No, no, not for the worst, for the better. Who's like Who's right now? If a teacher, mm -hmm. in, when I was going to school mm -hmm. in 1999, mm -hmm. a teacher could afford to send their child to But the question school. is, who was there to build that infrastructure that you and I went to school for? You tell me. That was, that was the government before. Most of the schools that you went, your generation went, were not built. They were built before independence. Mm -hmm. right? And, what, and right now, let's look at the T and W. And what did this, this government do to improve the lives of the people? Because you walk to Prince, mm -hmm. into Prince Edward right mm -hmm. now, or Alice Robbins, mm -hmm. or the school that I went to, Cremon Boise. Mm -hmm. It's in a sorry state. Mm -hmm. The government then during the white colonial era, kept the, those schools in pristine condition. Mm -hmm. And to a large extent, in the early days of independence, mm -hmm. Prince Edward was an A-plus school. Everyone, including myself, wanted mm -hmm. to go there. Mm -hmm. Today, I don't want my child to go there. Mm -hmm. Because it has been run down. But you, but you also acknowledge the fact that, you see, one thing that I've learned, one thing that I've observed in politics is this. A nation takes the tone of the person who's leading it. 
if you have a president like in this case we have a president who has a building background you will see the amount of projects that he starts to embark on and zimbabwe is coming from we got our independence and we went because araj mugabe the former president was a teacher he pushed the narrative of education henceforth you and i were able to speak english but there is need to also differentiate what happens in politics and also what happens in ministries because it's not everyone who's in the ministry who's a politician they are directors in ministries that are responsible for the management and evaluation of the assets that are belonging to the government like, like for example we're talking about education we have got the minister who's appointed by the president and we've got under the minister we've got the deputy minister those are political positions that can be appointed a person who won election and then he has appointed a deputy minister but we also have technocrats who comes in comes into the system as the permanent secretary some of them they come in as directors those are the people who are responsible to make sure the management the development the renovation the maintenance of those systems they come through those offices who, who, the back stops at all the back is what who is ultimately responsible? You and I, starting from you and I, we are responsible. And then the purpose of the government is to manage the responsibility, to manage the people that are managing the assets for us. Uh, well, if I put it to you, mm -hmm. Sheki, that the buck stops with the president. He appoints, he mm -hmm. disappoints. When schools go down, it is on his watch. But you know that there is what you call a, a delegated legislation. Whereby the president when is appointed a minister. The minister is now responsible to also appoint directors. The, 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 minister, one thing, the, one minister, thing, the minister is responsible borrowing his authority from where? Borrowing his authority. That's what I'm saying. It's delegated legislation. That, because the, remember... The minister borrows his authority from the president. Mm -hmm. Whatever duty he exercises, he exercises on behalf mm -hmm. of the president. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you see, you see, fa the you, minister's you, failures, mm -hmm. where there's delegated legislation, mm -hmm. the failure of the minister mm -hmm. goes back to the president. Let me show you something. That most people don't realize, Dara. I'm happy you, you raised this point. You see, I'll start with myself as an example. I've been elected a member of parliament through the voting process. But I was representing a party known as ZANPF, which means I was deployed to go and represent ZANPF in Chegut West constituents. And when I become an honorable member of parliament, and then let's say I'm appointed a minister or a deputy minister. What makes me appointed is not because I'm competent. What makes me appointed is the fact that there is a head of state, like in this case, there is a president. He looks at me or he looks at you, let's say you are the person in question. He looks at the potential that you have. When a president appoints a minister, it's a gesture of faith to honor a person to become an honorable minister representing the interests of the people and executing the division of the government. It is now the duty and the responsibility of an appointed person to reciprocate that respect that has been given by the head of state by becoming competent and then there is legitimacy performance. There is performance legitimacy from the minister. The problem that we might have is when a person is appointed, you are appointed because of merit but you are supposed to prove yourself worthy of the title that you have been given by the head of state. Because also understand, when a person becomes the head of state, like for example, I can give you a very good example. A person might be in government for a very long time, like our own president. He was in the government, he was in the structures. But the day a person is inaugurated into office to become a head of state, that's the first time they are working as a head of state. Henceforth, there is a need for the citizens to also be patient with the person. It's like me. I've never been a member of parliament, Shik and this Shik is training Shik on the job. Shiki, you have, you, have you have a tendency of skating around. No, I'm not skating issue. around. The issue here is the ah. buck stops with the president, does it not? The buck does not only stops with the president. The buck is on the chain of command. The president appoints. It is also the duty of the minister or whoever has been appointed by the president to also make sure they perform to prove that the president was right. The problem I then have is then when so Dara if, is appointed. If, 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 if that person who is who was appointed mm -hmm. does not perform. That's why you see the president also has got the executive power the, to make sure so, he fires. So according to you, mm -hmm. the person has the duty to perform to prove the president was right. Mm -hmm. If they don't perform, mm -hmm. they've proved that the president was wrong. No, they didn't prove that the president was wrong. Uh -huh. They have proved that they are not qualified for the job. But if they perform, they prove the president right. Exactly. If they don't perform, they are the ones who are wrong. 
They are the ones who are... Uh, what kind of okay. leadership is let me, that? Let me, let me show you something, Dara. When you're leading, let's say you in your own family, you know your kids. You end up knowing that this one has got a strength in this particular regard. This one has got a strength in this particular regard. But it took you time for you to be able to understand those kids. Sheki, uh -huh. I'm head of news and current affairs at mm -hmm. HSTV. Exactly. The platform that makes talk, talk. That's true. And the reason why you're still and, there, you and, know what? It's because and, you're competent. And, and, and anyone within my team mm -hmm. that I have chosen mm -hmm. to be in my team mm -hmm. sat on a selection panel mm -hmm. and said, these guys are worthy to be part of my team. Mm -hmm. If they fail to perform, mm -hmm. if any of their stories is not checkable, mm -hmm. I am responsible. Mm -hmm. You are responsible. I am That's why you can fire them. Yes. Exactly. The buck stops with me. But that's what I'm saying. But you are saying the bug does not stop with the president. So why is he the president? The bug does not... Okay, let's come back to your own scenario. The bug does not stop with you. But at the end of the day, you are the person who then calls the shots. It stops with me. Exactly. It so the issue, the issue is Dara here. You have a team that you have appointed to go and deliver to the people that elected you into office. The duty is for the person appointed to also give validity to the appointment if i am appointed myself i need to do the honorable thing politics should be that clear to say you know what your excellence this appointment you've given me i don't think i'm the right person for the job i don't have the capacity to be able to perform in this role when politicians get to that maturity then we are talking about national building because we have a problem do, whereby do, do you think do you think I, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, on just on a sidebar, mm -hmm. because I don't understand the leadership mm -hmm. that says the person who appoints mm -hmm. does not have, the, must not accept blame or failure of the person that they appointed. No, definitely they, 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 they definitely they are responsible, henceforth they've got the right to fire. But do you think that the ministers who mm -hmm. are serving in this government, mm -hmm. who have schools that are rotting, mm -hmm who have hospitals that have no medicine according to what you say, are being fair to the citizens who elected them. Let me show you something. Or rather, are they being fair to the appointing authority? When, when ministers are appointed, they are appointed to be able to deliver the mandate of the president and the government and the mandate that is expected by the citizens. But don't forget, every minister works with the budget allocated to them. And for a budget to be formulated, there has to be need of production so that they can be able to raise funds that can then be deployed in different no, but, ministries. But, but if you listen to, me, to Minister Finance Minister Ntulingwe, mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. have got a $12 billion mining economy. Mm -hmm. We have got an agricultural sector that is booming. Mm -hmm. We are ticking all the boxes. That's mm -hmm. what he says. I mean, he's so animated when mm -hmm. he talks about it mm -hmm. and how NDS1 is a massive success. It's a success. Yes, but why are the people poor? Listen, you see, the problem that you're having there is you're expecting an imminent result. This is a country you're talking about. This is not a, this is not a council. Life was better in 2017 that, for that, people. That, 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 I, had, I had US dollars in my pocket. Mm -hmm. I could afford to go on holiday. In mm -hmm. fact, in 2018, I went to Cape Town. Mm -hmm. I can't afford to go to Kariba right now. You can't tell me and the people out there that mm -hmm. life is better. Maybe for you, Sheikh. <laughs> You, so, see, so, you see, why, so you see why, why, you see why so why are the people suffering when things are better? That is the question, Sheikh. You see, the problem that we're having, Dara, is that we have a situation whereby you are amplifying problems. We have problems as a nation. That part I acknowledge fully. We have our own problems. Same applies with South Africa. They've got their own problems. Zambia, they've got their own problems. The problem that we do is in as much as we should own our problems and we mitigate them by coming up with solutions. The reason or the purpose of the government is to make a conducive environment for every Zimbabwean to be able to produce what, what, and be what, able... What is the solution, Sheki, uh -huh. for suffering doctors? Apart from when they strike, you fire all of them. Apart when we, they fired all of them. The, the then acting minister of health... But they were not fired. They, they were fired. That was, listen, there's a code of conduct that a doctor is supposed to act accordingly. He came and he reminded them of the contract that they signed. That was not firing. It was calling them to order. Simply because, you see, he fired when, 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 when you become a doctor, you have an oath, you have a code of conduct that is expected of a doctor. To go and, and you, operate on listen, people while you act according to those you, prescriptions, right? Your oath is uh. be hungry, 
Go and operate someone. You no, can that's actually. You, that's, that's you saying. You can that. actually faint because that's you, that's you because when that. someone says, "Look, mm. I am hungry. Mm -hmm. I can't continue working," mm -hmm. you fire them and say, "Follow your oath." So if you say that. In essence, you are basically saying we don't care if you are angry. No, no, no. We, we don't care if you no, no, can't listen, send listen, your child listen, to school. Let me, let me, let me show you Follow something. Follow your oath, L even if you are angry. Let me show you where the problem is in yes. this country. Mm. This is a problem show that me. is uniquely Zimbabwean. Zimbabweans, in as much as we've got our own problems, we can never delegate the development of this country to any other person who's not a Zimbabwean. We have delegated to Chinese. Why? How? 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 how, how so? The, the Chinese are the ones who are running our minds. Mm -hmm. The Chinese are the ones who are building our state house gate. The Chinese are the ones who are building our parliament. The Chinese are the ones who are bringing medicine. The warehouse just opposite, opposite our uh, hospital. I'm happy, I'm happy you're talking about this medicine is, being brought into the country. No, there's a warehouse. I said warehouse. Mm -hmm. and, and we have said they should bring medicine, mm -hmm. right? But most of the times it's empty though. The Chinese are the ones you, who... You see, Dara, you see, Dara, we, there is, there is we, one thing that we need to deal with as Zimbabweans, mm -hmm. which is taking responsibility of developing our country. Whatever nation that you can tell me about today, whether it's America, whether it's what, there is a time when their doctors were willing to work without any pay, but they knew that they were developing their country. Mm -hmm. That process is Zimbabweans, we have never gone through that. I have spoken to doctors. Mm -hmm. And doctors are okay working even without money. As long as, that they, as, long as they know that the money is not there. You have a health services board mm -hmm. that, that buys brand new Land, uh, uh, land Rovers. But that's that, e evolved. That, 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 you see, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Listen, amazing that's, vehicles listen, there. That's what I'm talking that about. Same board listen, says there's no you see, you see that. So it this doesn't is, make sense. This is where I want you to listen to mm, me. This is what I'm, I'm saying. We need to come up with a solution of a materialistic mentality that has been entrenched mm. in every Zimbabwean. It's a national problem, not only a government problem. Mm. Whether you go to a private company, you see the packages that are being given to that CEO of that particular company, which means we need leaders, whether they are CEOs, whether they are politicians. We have got people at heart who can go to the parliament and say, you know what, this car that you have given me, because I've got a constituent that doesn't have an ambulance, I'm going to make sure the money or the disbursement that is allocated to me as a member of parliament, I'm going to buy ambulances. That's where we need to go back to. And that is not only going to be done because there is a have, government that is have, there. Have you, it's a personal have, have mentality. Have you bought an ambulance, Sheki, for your constituency? I haven't bought my an ambulance, but, but I'm going to buy. Because remember, I was in an election. I got elected on the 3rd of February. Right now, if you go back to my constituencies, I've been able to go and give food hampers to all the nurses that work at Chegu Hospital. You can go and check. I went recently and I was giving food hampers to almost every what, patient who was what, admitted. What, what kind of country is that, Sheki? That no, I'm, accept people, I'm, I'm, I'm that accepting. That gives people food hampers. No, no, no. There is when, a moment, when, where people see, are elected, you they, see, they distribute food hampers. No, no, what no, no, kind no, of no, country no, no. is that? You should never. There is no country that does not have a charity wing. As a person, I'm allowed to exercise. As a person, a, a, a full and yeah. employed nurse mm -hmm. is subject to receiving charity. In what kind of country? Listen, is that? let me show you something. There is nothing that stops you and me to be philanthropic in our approach. Yes, philanthropic. So if, if to I the have, poor, to the poor, yes. No, 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 not only to the poor. Are you, or, or maybe? No, maybe, no, no, not maybe, only to the poor. Maybe, maybe I am. Maybe I am. I'm going forward. On. Okay. Yes. Maybe you are suggesting. It's a gesture of love. Maybe you're suggesting to me uh -huh. right here, right now, uh -huh. that these nurses are poor. They can't afford no, 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 food no, no, hampers no. for themselves. Charity doesn't only happen when a person is poor. You would go and you can come and you, give to me not because I'm poor, but because it's a token of appreciation. I can come and give to you not because you're poor, but it's a token of appreciation. So giving hampers to nurses does not mean anything to do with poverty. I am in the constituents. I'm their elected member of parliament. I'm appreciating the hard work that they're doing, and I'm allowed. If I can afford, and they should not even expect that, if I can afford to be able to go and buy hampers for them as a gesture of love and appreciation, I can do that. That's being human. That's being a human. We, 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 we have a government mm -hmm. that would give 23 ministers mm -hmm. 400,000 dollar US dollar loans each mm -hmm. and pays civil servants in other TGS. What kind of countries? But remember also there's a USD component. A COVID allowance that was just recently turned into a salary. It was just an allowance. But if you check, you see the problem, the problem that we are having here 
you are you are subjecting what has happened to the minister or to the member of parliament or to a, a senior board member to say it should be the same the, that happens the, the when thing, it comes wait 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 wait, 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 wait i'll allow Listen. you to I'll, let me let me break oh, your train oh. of thought there mm -hmm. i'll allow you to proceed mm -hmm. but i want you to realize something and i think this is very very important mm -hmm. when i come here and sit next to you mm -hmm. And ask you questions. Mm -hmm. I play the devil's advocate. True. I ask questions not of my own. Definitely. I ask and questions. That's, a good, that, that's, a, that's being a yeah, good journalist. So every time mm -hmm. you say you are having a problem, I'm asking you to answer questions that the people are asking directly. Which is good. Yes. You see, you see, so Dara, let, let, me, let, me, let me give you a very good example. One thing that has made me to be who I am is I acknowledge that people are different. In our political structures, I'm a novice, I'm a junior. There are people who are senior. I don't have any spiteful feeling when I see my senior being appreciated. When a person becomes an official member, let's say he becomes a minister, it means that person has been able to do something that I have not done, henceforth I'm not a minister. There are privileges that come with the title being called a minister. We should not be poor mentality to the point that we need a minister to look... Hmm? Bad, simply Shaki, because Shaki, the people of Zimbabwe are not saying that the ministers should be poor. Mm -hmm. No, the, mean, the people, that's, 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 the people that's, of Zimbabwe that's, that's are the simply perspective saying, you're no, giving me. The people of Zimbabwe mm -hmm. are simply saying, if sanctions are biting, mm -hmm. let them bite all of us. People of Zimbabwe are saying, if the economy is turning around, mm -hmm. let us all feel it. Mm -hmm. It should not be felt by the elites only. No, but how are you that saying is, it's only felt by the elites? Because. The middle class, mm -hmm. which I'm supposed to occupy, mm -hmm. which teachers are supposed to occupy, mm -hmm. is being obliterated. Right now, you walk into classrooms, teachers are selling sweets. You, you see, you see, you see, right you now, see, Dara, as we sit, you see, taking, Dara, the problem, I, I said this before, mm -hmm. the problem we are having is lack of a responsibility coming from us, all of us as citizens. I've said it before. For you to compare Zimbabwe with any economy that you would want to compare with, for the reason why they are able, the reason why Russia is able to sell wheat to other countries is because Russians have agreed to say we are going to become farmers. How many young people right now are willing to become farmers in Zimbabwe? Lots of them. Where are they? Why are they not farming? According to the land audit, most of the farms are being held by non-productive people who believe that the land is theirs. They are held by what? Non-productive. They are held by what? Non-productive. So that, is that not a Zimbabwean Pe problem? People from your party mm -hmm. who got that land because of their privilege and connection to mm -hmm. that political party mm -hmm. and because they believe that they fought in the war. So that's not a Zimbabwean problem. But right now, isn't there land audit? Party, that is a party problem, is it not? No, it's not a party problem. It's a nation problem. The party is Because you as Dara, we need to be able to go to where, where you come from. Let's say, where, where did you come from? I'm not very sure. No, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. I am but, I'm originally okay, no, no, from Chipinge. No, that's I, fine. I let's say we go way. to Chipinge. Yes. To Giambo. We are in Chipinge. No. There is always a place we call our village homes, right? Production should start at that, at that small cluster. The problem we have, I even said this before, the problem we have in Zimbabwe is we were a country that enjoyed production that was not done by us. Even when the land distribution was done in 2000. Look at what happened. But, but that's because, not true, Sheki. Why? That's not true. Why? The majority of maize meal uh, that mm. was produced in this country mm -hmm. came from so small scale farmers in the rural do, in the do, rural do, do you know, do you, are you aware of that I, i'm aware that's why yeah, we have no. got into us that is being implemented by the president it's acknowledgement of that fact Shaki, in twasa or timba ugute or timba ujige something mm. like that it's mm. something that is that 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 has been happening for ages. That is that is an old age farming method. Let me show you something. In a world where irrigation. Let, let me show you something. Where, where, where your minister? I, I have not seen a single minister shake. Mm -hmm. Who's got a farm? Who's doing timber good? Not. Why? Why are you the elites? Mm -hmm. Those in power. So immune to these things that you subscribe for others. What do you mean so immune? You you. For, for instance, you see, you see, you're telling someone problem, to write... The ride, problem we are having, you, or the problem I'm having, you, echoed here, you, you, is you, a problem. Okay, you, you are asking someone mm -hmm. to cycle mm -hmm. to Blawayo, mm -hmm. yet you are flying. And you say this is, this is the mentality that we should have. I mean, that is ridiculous, isn't it? You, 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 see, you, see, you see where we are, like I'm saying, mm -hmm. we have a problem that is being echoed. 
that is coming from the point of thinking that people are the same. That I will reiterate yet this. People are not the same in this life. This is one thing I accepted a long time ago, right? There are different modalities that work in different environments. There are people who are supposed to be given those methods and means of agriculture because of the size of their level of farming. And then there is a person who is a, a two farm that is being productive. You don't expect that person to be doing. I I I, I pointed out exactly most of the farms uh -huh. that are being held mm -hmm. by people who are non-productive. Mm -hmm. I will give you an example mm -hmm. in Chegutu. Mm -hmm. As you en as you enter uh, as as you leave Chegutu, there mm -hmm. was there was a farm, mm -hmm. a citrus farm. Mm -hmm. I mean. Zanu PF gave then Deputy Minister Bright Matonga that farm. Mm -hmm. He dried trees. You know how difficult it is to dry a tree? <laughs> he dried citrus trees. They are not there anymore. <laughs> Do you know how difficult it is to, to grow a tree in the middle of a canal? There are trees, huge trees from the time he took over that mm -hmm. have grown the then Senate President, mm -hmm. Edna Mazong, mm -hmm. just next to Bright Matonga, mm -hmm. she took a thriving citrus farm mm -hmm. and turned it into Westland. Mm -hmm. You go to Ambassador James Manzo, mm -hmm. in that area as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's Chicago West Constitution, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm listening. There was a thriving mango plantation mm -hmm. and citrus plantation. It's all gone to naught. It's now a bush where we used to earn millions. <laughs> this is not a national problem. <laughs> I'm happy with, uh, with the illustrations you're giving. But um, I think you saw, I, 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 I once said something in this interview prior when I said we have a problem. And I was giving an example to say, if I'm given something, and I give myself as an example, I should be truthful enough to look within my capabilities and be able to declare, this shoe is too big for me to fit. That's the kind of leadership I believe in. I don't just do things because it suits or it feeds my ego or my interest. I'll give a very good example. If I'm asked to do something that I cannot do, I lose nothing by claiming and declaring that this I can't do. So we have a national problem and we have a person's problem. Remember I said we have a problem in this country which is materialism. People who possess things but they don't utilize those things for the benefit of every citizen. If I own a farm, it's a privilege that I should look at and take as a responsibility to make sure that if I've got a 400 hectare farm, I need to make sure I produce at the level of a 400 hectare farm, lest so that I can be able to cover for a family that does not have a hectare of a farm. So I will answer that perspective from a point of saying, we need to have self-introspection at personal level and at national level and at constituents level. That's what you see. Do you think we can get there? Yeah, we can get there. I believe I'm optimistic. But the problem needs us, you and I, to actually work on it because we have got people. Like you're saying, we have got people who are sitting on idle farms. That's why I'm happy with the land order that is happening, a use it or lose it agenda, whereby they come and look at what you're doing as blessing. Do, do, do you think there's political will to solve that? Yeah, because I, 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 I went to, to Headlands, mm -hmm. and, and, and there's a farm that is just close to... Um, uh, former finance minister Patrick Chinamasa's farm. Mm -hmm. It used to produce uh, peaches, uh, you know, and it's dry right now. <laughs> and I asked, I asked the people around, who owns this farm? Mm -hmm. Tsunami General. Okay. A and no one will touch that farm. Why are you, why are you sure? Because they have not touched it. You know, you, you, know, you know the reason why, I'll, I'll come back to you, the reason why I love the current administration and the president and his vice president is the implementation of pragmatic issues. I'll give you a very good example of something that is actually happening right now. 
we we have a land audit that is happening and that land audit it's a land audit of verifying land owners in this country some of the people that got land scrupulously through land barons through scrupulous ways and I'm happy because this audit, if you check, unfortunately, there are some other innocent people who have become victims. And I'm happy because it was already, it's being discussed in the National House of Assembly on making sure that those people have got the right to land and they should be able to live, like in mm. compounds. I, 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 I like what you're talking about, but mm -hmm. we've heard of this land audit, mm -hmm. countless. Mm -hmm. In fact, there was a report that was handed over to the president, mm -hmm. President Nemasa Namudzamnangagwa, when he became president mm -hmm. uh, just just after uh, the elections in 2018. Mm -hmm. Nothing has happened. We have had numerous... I, I, I don't believe nothing has happened. Mm -hmm. The reason why okay, there is so, so much me, noise so right tell now... Tell me about what has happened. What is happening is that right now... The, you see, when government is implementing a policy, don't expect it to be implemented like we are implementing or it's being implemented at a high school. Whereby if the headmaster says tomorrow everyone is civics, they come with your clothes. When we talk about a nation with a population of more close to 17 million people, there is time that needs to be taken before certain decisions are made. Five years? Ten years? Fifteen years? No, the president is not even ruled for more than ten years as, as, as far as I'm concerned. So if you have ended that report, remember there's the due diligence of that report. And after the due diligence, they come up with, a, uh, they come up with an implementation plan of that particular audit that was sent. Henceforth, we are now seeing the government and the president say, we are coming to take audit of, of the land that we have as a state. So to me, according to me, that's something that is happening. But that's what I'm saying. Unfortunately, there are situations like there are specific situations whereby you've got people that are staying in compounds, mm -hmm. that are victims of actually a land baron who gave them land without the rightful uh, legislation. We all, know, we, we all know uh -huh. how this land was given, don't we? We, we saw... Dr. Chombo, during mm -hmm. campaigns, uh, going and, and officially opening uh, housing schemes mm -hmm. and, 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 and the houses which are now being demolished, mm -hmm. didn't we? But, 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 this but, was a ZANU PF thing. No, no, it was not a ZANU PF thing. Do, you see, Dr. You, Chombo you, was you, what? You see, you, you, you're calling this Yebet uh, Chitepo cooperative, uh, uh, Joshua Nkomo, well, you know, and, and, and they were chaired by ZANU PF chairpersons, and, and people would come with their party cards. I mean, this, this is, is, is not a secret. This is a public secret that these things were happening. Today we turn around to say we want an audit report. To do what? On things that ministers... No, but you, are the, you, are, you, are, you are the one, was, Dara, who's talking about the audit report that was given to the president. And now the president is acting on that. Mm -hmm. There's no sacred cow in that. Henceforth, it's affecting people in ZANU-PF, people in any other political party. That's an effective because, president. Because you... And yeah. now you're coming back to say no. Because you have acquired the power. And now the gimmicks of getting to that power doesn't matter anymore. Mm. Those, those who supported you on the basis that remember, they remember, getting land from you remember, are now suffering. Remember, I'm a ZANPF member of parliament. I know, right? this is why I'm asking And that's what I'm that saying. Person. We have got unfortunate situations. In my constituency, they are places that are being affected by that. There might be a person who woke up and he says, I'm allocating you land there. There are people who always do that. Whether it's ZANPF, whether it's what people, politicians, they promise people. And they do things for them to be able to win votes. And that's what I'm saying. We why, why were discussing. That? That's the nature of politicians. And you're also doing it? No, I'm not doing it. Why? It's because I know that's the reason why people lose power. You should be able to tell people the truth. What you can't, you can't. What you can, you can. Let people love you for who you are, not for people to love you for a gimmick. It's not nice. So you see, right now we're having a situation of people who are doing political rhetoric, giving politics. Are you sure you're ZANPF? Yes, I'm ZANPF. Fair is ZANPF. That's why I contested is ZANPF. And the reason why I'm saying these things is to show you that it's not a ZANPF problem. It's an individual problem. There are things that if I do in my own personal capacity, they will be amplified simply because I'm a member of parliament representing ZANPF. So there are MPs from ZANPF who have been tainting the party and making the party to, to put the name of the party in disrepute by activities that we do in our own capacity as individuals. Name one. No, I wouldn't name, I wouldn't name anyone. Why? I wouldn't. Why? I wouldn't. I mean, I'm asking for a reason. Myself, I name myself simply because I want to be different from everyone. That's, it's, it's as simple as that. Because you see, we, 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 that's, that's where the problem is. If you look at the ZANU-PF, ideology. 
I, as a person representing ZANU PF, there are things that I do in my personal capacity. And there are things that I should then prohibit myself from doing. I sanctify myself to align with the ideology of the party. If you remember, there's a song that used to be sang by comrades in war. And they were saying, It was a song of discipline, right? I should then be able to sanctify myself as a person representing a revolutionary party, ZANPF, not to put it in disrepute because of my greed. Hmm. That only doesn't apply to Zanpiv, but in every political party. We have got people who are getting into politics for livelihoods. They are in it for money. They are selfish. They are policing. If you look at it, they are not going to do any policing that serves the interests of the people. And the reason why I'm able to say these things is because I've always told you, I've shared a personal relationship with the president and the vice president. And this is the politics that they've taught me. Simbare woverino vamvura. Go and love people the way they are supposed to be loved. Henceforth, I'm so bold to come and declare this. To say, we have people that have been doing this in ZANPF and that are still doing this in ZANPF, whereby they do things in their own capacity for their own selfish gains, but they put the party in disrepute. Why is the party silent? The party is not time? silent. That's why you see I'm talking. Before you, it was very hard to get a ZANPF legislator member. It's um, because ZANPF, my brother, is regenerating itself. We are evolving as a party. And so you see a person like me, I'm saying things that I'm saying. Simply because we have a work to do within our own party and every political party. When leaders become leaders, let them be leaders, loving people wholeheartedly and saving the interests of the people that vote them into power. That's what makes the country go further. Because the moment we don't have... It's like we're, you're talking about the, the, the recalls that happened. That I became a person who participated because there was a recall. That's political chaos. Simply because there's someone who's greedy within that particular structure. Had we not a greedy person, we were never going to have that situation like that. You're happy because you have greedy people? Because they No, I'm not happy because we've got greedy you people. A to no, 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 it's not a backdoor. It's that was the democratic process of this country when there's a RICO, and that RICO was not emanating from ZANPF. But ZANPF is, not, is allowed to field a candidate when an opportunity has been presented. And I was fielded as the candidate and I won election. And come 2028, God willing, I'll also stand in the election. And definitely, I'll win election. You know why? It's because I know I'm going to love these people wholeheartedly and I'm going to do that which I'm supposed to do, which is not hiding my face to the poor. That's the ZANPF I believe in. And that's the ZANPF I affiliate in. That's the ZANPF I've been taught by my political godfathers. Z ZANPF that has been introducing serious taxes that are eating into people's hard end earnings. That is impoverished <laughs> teachers <laughs> and doctors. That 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 has introduced uh, sugar sugar tax. That has increased the drink of choice for the poor. Mazoe orange crush mm. from three dollars to five United States dollars. It's an PF government that says. But if you see, those are some of the things that are being debated within the House of Assembly. But people are already feeling it while it's just debating. No, definitely people will feel it. You see, you see, ZANPF that makes a passport cost 200 United States. No, but States if you dollars. say ZANPF, it's not ZANPF, it's the government. Because these legislations are being passed in a parliament I, that is represented by every I, political I like, party. I like, I like it when you shift to say it's not ZANPF, it's government. But when you go and you say you represent ZANPF because look what our president has done, mm -hmm. has built roads, mm -hmm. the president of ZANPF has done this, when it's positive. It's an PF. Mm. When it's negative, yeah. it's government. I mean, I mean, how? how no, I'm not. I'm, I'm, how, I'm how, not changing how run, that. How do you run this, away? I'm, I'm not running away mm. from anything. Look at this. I've said this, and I'll keep on saying this. Zimbabwe has not been producing for a very long time, and by the fact that we are not producing for a very long time, we are going to feel it as Zimbabweans. Whether people are going to hate me for this truth, there is some, a some, season we are supposed say, to accept some, our reality data to say, say we need to build our country. Some, some will say it's not because Zimbabwe has not been producing. Mm. It's because those in power, mm -hmm. the elite, mm -hmm. have been stealing for a very long time. They looted Azim dry. Mm -hmm. They've looted Wangi Colliery Mine dry. The Auditor's General's report is mm -hmm. there for all to see. Mm -hmm. They have been looting Parastatals, dry. This is why in the vainest attempts mm -hmm. to stop this looting, there's been a MTAPA fund that has been created. But this but is how, because how, of looting. We discussed about this in our previous interview. How do you label that a, a looting scheme? What? How? 
What? Which ones are legitimate? You see, the reason why those I parastatals, in, in the the reason why those parastatals were not functional the way they are supposed to be functioning mm -hmm. is simply because there was a there was a bureaucratic delay in those some of those parastatals. No, 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 no. I, I will tell I will tell you. Mm. Parastatals mm -hmm. are forced and commanded to go and exhibit mm -hmm. at all ZANU-PF conferences and meetings mm -hmm. to fund ZANU-PF activities. I'm listening. We, 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 we see this and, and we know this. Zupko, for instance, mm -hmm. all the buses, you will fail to find transport where there's a ZANU-PF conference. They'll be packed. ZANU-PF conference. You will see the Zimbabwe Electricity Supply Authority mm -hmm. with all its engineers and top engineers in their cars parked outside the ZANU-PF venue to ensure that there's electricity. They will actually load shed an industrial area to ensure that the venue where there's a ZANU-PF conference there's parked. <laughs> we know but, this. But, but see, so there, so, so why would you way, blame, is there, is there would you blame no, production? That, is, there, is there a way that we can validate what you're claiming? I mean, you and me know that. No, 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 no. me, I don't know that. You are claiming, of, you are coming to say, of, 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 engineers will be Of course, you can. Uh, I'll, uh, <laughs> ne next time, I'll, I'll, I'll take pictures. I'll take pictures. But you I'll, I'll, call me. I'll, 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 I can tell you this for a fact. Mm. Opposite Mkoba, where President uh, uh, Emerson, uh, uh, Robert Mugabe used to have his rallies, mm. just of opposite Mkoba, do you know there was uh, a PowerPoint that was put in the middle of nowhere? It's still there right now. Mm -hmm. That would connect PAs, speakers, and stuff like that for when the president comes. Okay. When ZANU PF conference was held in Goromons, mm -hmm. do you know all the roads were hard? Th I mean, this is this is not a public secret. Okay. This, this is not a secret. The roads leading to Goromons were hard. Mm -hmm. I'm listening. The, I, I was working there. I've never seen such amazing internet speeds. Mm -hmm. We have the resources. We just don't put them to production. If someone was to push back saying that... But how do we validate we that we have got the resources that are being deployed to use when we've got devolution funds? Because devolution funds, they are being allocated to every constituency, and every I, province. I was talking about production. Mm -hmm. Production has suffered for political expedience. You, 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 you see, this is, where, this is where I'm coming to say, you see... There is a type of leadership that we are now under. The reason why you see me in politics, blessing Dara, is because I affiliate to the ideology which I'm articulating right now, which I've learned from the president and his vice president and some other party officials. You know why? That's why you're asking me, are you ZANU-PF? This is the ideology I've learned and I've been taught. And I'm proud of this ideology and I'll defend it to the fullest, because I started getting an understanding of how politics should be, and I was being taught by His Excellency President Mnangagwa and his Deputy, Deputy President, Vice President Konsino Chuenga. This is the ideology that ZAN-PF ought to command us as MPs. Henceforth, you see me representing my other brothers who are not here to say, this is how we want, and this is how we see politics. There might be, have been problems that, hap that, that, that have happened in the past. We cannot run away from that fact. No, we can't. Every political party has got its own problems that are but internal, problem, that are external. But the problems continue. There is a parastatal right now mm -hmm. that is on owed by government, and government is not paying 180 billion. This is Which affecting. One? This is affecting its operations. It's being There's, owed by the government. Yes. Mm -hmm. Harare City Council, I was talking to the mayor, Jacob Mafume, mm -hmm. is owed in excess of 50 billion by government. Government is not paid. It's crippling service delivery and the ability for Harare City Council to be able to deliver. Mm -hmm. This is across the entire nation. Mm -hmm. Yet, yet, when there is a rally, mm -hmm. the resources are there. I mean, this is what boggles my mind. I'm listening. Yeah. So, what new politics are you talking about? You no, know, there's new politics. This I can guarantee you. There's new politics. You see, they, 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 we are dealing with a cancer. We allowed in our nation at its inception. And I'll keep on reiterating this problem. 
which is the problem of materialism. When this country was formulated, they retired Peugeot's. They retired the Peugeot's and then the Peugeot's were given to the Pemsek during that time and they bought Mercedes-Benz. It has been like that ever since. And our government right now, it's pushing to limit that. And those are some of the issues. If you watch me debate, those, those are some those, of the issues are, I'll be articulating those in the are National are House of Assembly. Those who are eating are pushing to stop others from eating. Amazing. Because I've seen those that are the head and the helm. They live like flamboyant lives. They have top of the range vehicles bought by taxpayers' money. Like who? Anyone, any minister. If if you see, if you see, mm. if I I covered I covered rallies, the mm. PF rallies, mm -hmm. by the past election, and you know, I was standing there, mm. and top of the range vehicles. And you, there is Darabi. <laughs> what car and and, and and. and and one woman just said, Veneva you know? Mm. And it was just amazing to hear mm. that. That when they see those top of the range, mm. expensive vehicles, mm. they know it's, it's a government minister, it's a political elite. Mm. And, and you're saying it's new politics. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me, uh, Sheki, and, and for having this candid conversation. I mean, uh, you're always candid and thank you, thank and, you. and you always I take enjoy the questions. interacting with you. You always take the questions as they come. <laughs> uh, amazing. But before I let you go, Sheki, mm. I just want to give you a moment mm. um, away from your heart if you have a message that you have. Uh, because here on the Free Talk, in proud partnership with the Fred Newman Foundation mm. for Freedom, we believe that nations are built using free speech. We Control. believe that people must be heard and ideas must be exchanged. Governments must be kept to account. Trump. Those who are elected in office must face the nation. <laughs> Please do face thank the nation so and thank tell you. them thank you. what you thank are you. offering. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, firstly, I would want to appreciate you, my brother, for always keeping in check and inviting me for interviews like this. And it's a privilege and it's an honor. And I would really want to appreciate you for the good work that you're doing. And uh, what I would say is, because today we were talking as, an, as a politician, what I would say is, um, as politicians, our responsibility is to represent those that elect us into office. Uh, and we love them despite their political affiliations, because you're no longer representing a political party, but you're representing a people. That's the politics that I've learned from my own political mentors. They are teaching me how to love people. They are teaching me how to go and demonstrate that which they want to see being done to their people. In this case, I'm talking about my president, President Yamasan Mnangagwa, and his vice president, President uh, Vice President Chwenga. They are teaching us to go and love people as young legislators, to go and be able to not hide our faces from the poor and relate with them and be able to solve their problems. And I'm calling upon every politician to be responsible and to have people at heart before we do politics of greed. Thank you. Amazing. Now, this is the platform for the people. This is the platform that all ideas are shared. We believe that only when we start talking to each other, and only when we start accepting the issues around our lives, can we change this nation for the better. I, your host as usual, Dara B, will continue to search for the answers for you. We'll continue to invite voices so that you get the answers, and so that you also have a picture of where your country is going and what your elected officials are doing. We will also allow you to speak so that your elected officials can hear directly from you. Now this is the free talk, and this is me, your host as usual, Dara B. Until next time, please, if you have enjoyed this conversation, if you have enjoyed, if you enjoy our program, don't forget to subscribe, to like, or follow us on any of our pages as indicated in this program. Until next time, thank you.